Hi everyone, welcome to the second tutorial on deep learning in neuroscience. In this tutorial, we are going to build an encoding model to try to understand how neurons represent different visual stimuli. So now our network will take as input a stimulus, S, and output a prediction for each of these neurons' activity, which are these various YIs. So let's look at some of this neural data. In this case, before bidding, we split the stimuli into two sets, a train test and a test set. Then we bin the stimuli in, in bins of six degrees and average the responses within that bin for each given neuron. So now that we've done this binning, you can look at these different neurons' tuning curves. And in some cases, you can see two peaks in response to these stimuli, in some cases, Maybe you see more than two peaks, maybe you see three. But in many of these cases, it looks like these tuning curves are the sum of a few of these peaks at different locations along this stimulus orientation uh, dimension. And in fact, a model such as this, which is the sum of, of a few filters along a given dimension, is called a convolutional model. And they are used all the time in deep learning and computer vision. So that's great, we're going to use a deep network now with convolutions in order to fit these neural responses. So first, what is a convolution? So a convolution is the integral of a product of two functions, one of which is our filter, f, which we can show here. We're using an example of a, of a Gaussian filter, and our stimulus, s, which in this case, we've, uh, we've created our stimulus such that it's zero everywhere except for one in the stimulus bin where the stimulus uh, where the stimulus is that orientation. So if you want to perform a convolution and get the same output as the input, you need to pad the input by half the filter size on each side. And so that's what we did here. And this padding by half the filter size is called same padding. Next, let's compute the output of the convolution at each position x along the stimulus dimension. Each a sub x here at each position is called a convolutional unit. And the size of its response after performing this convolution is called its activation. So to compute a sub x, we're going to slide this filter f along the stimulus s and compute the sum of the product at each of these points. So this results in these activations on the right. And I'll play it again so you can see it again. So all the units of this given filter, these different dots here, are called a channel. Another parameter of this convolution computation is the stride. And the stride is how often along the stimulus to compute A. And so in this case, we use a stride of one. We have a, we have a different unit for every single position along the stimulus axis, X. But we could also use a stride of 10, where we'd have fewer responses that are, are more spread out here. And this can be advantageous uh, in terms of efficiency if you want to reduce the amount of computation that you have to do. So now, how do we compute this computation of, of this convolution? So we can loop over these positions x uh, with some spacing, which is the stride. And then at each of these positions x, we're going to take the sum of the product of the filter and the stimulus, which is shown here as an element-wise multiplication and a sum in NumPy. In practice, we will not implement this convolution in NumPy. Uh, we do it in this exercise here so that you have some understanding of how it works, but it's slow to do it in this way. Uh, instead, we're going to use PyTorch. And also in PyTorch, you can optionally use GPU acceleration to make these uh, convolutional computations even faster. So how do we compute a convolution in PyTorch? So we're going to take, a, we're going to create a convolutional layer, which, which in this case takes as input a stimulus, which looks like this, where it's zero everywhere except for one in the bin where the stimulus was active. Now this convolutional layer is initialized with a few different parameters, which you can see here. So the first one is CN, which is the number of input channels. And in this case, it's one, because we only have one stimulus dimension here. And then the, the other one is 
The other C is C out, which is the number of convolutional channels you have, which in this case will set the default value to eight. And then the last one is the size of the filter K, which we set again to, to a default value, which is nine, which is around nine of these stimulus bins. But you can play with these parameters. So now we're going to declare our convolutional layer using an nnconv1d object, which takes as input the, the input channels, uh, the number of output channels, which is the number of convolutional channels we'll create, uh, the kernel size, and then also the padding, which again will we'll set to uh, the kernel size over two, and then the stride will be one. So now in this case, if we, if we give it an input, which is, uh, has a length of 60, we'll get an output, which is also a length of 60. So how do we put this input into, the, into this class? This is going to be similar to what we did in the previous tutorial, we're also going to declare this, this forward method. And now forward is going to take as input the stimulus x. And the, the first thing we will have to do is we're going to have to add this single dimen singleton dimension, which is adding this one dimensional channel, which is this cn. And then after we add this dimension, we can pass x through this convolutional layer and get our output. So why are com convolutions good for encoding models in the brain? Uh, in fact, the brain itself has a convolutional-like architecture. So in the retina, there are a variety of cell types which we can think of as different filters. And each of these cells tile the entire visual space. So this picture here shows the part of visual space uh, in which each one of these cells responds to. In barrel cortex, we have a similar situation where each of the whiskers activations like this one here, corresponds to a single cortical column of activity, and the functions computed in each of these columns is similar.